All right, this is John Cola at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And what we're gonna share with you guys today is a solution if you want to juice commercially in a cafe, you know, or a juice bar, or for your kombucha business, but you need a commercial certified juicer that is approved through the NSF and or ETL sanitation standards. This is very important if you're in the commercial industry. Many health departments around the country will require this NSF or ETL sanitation mark in order for you to use the juicer um, for health code reasons. I know and have heard of places using non-certified uh, commercial juicers and they get uh, you know, shut down or they're, they're, they cannot, they're told they cannot use the juicers anymore. So you wanna do it right the first time and get a certified juicer, especially in places like uh, California. You know, they're gonna ensure and require you to get a uh, approved commercial juicer. And I know a lot of you guys are looking at household juicers to use in your commercial establishment, but that many household juicers are not built to rigorous commercial standards to number one, pass the health department uh, safety codes. And more importantly, number two, they do not have a powerful enough motor to withstand basically being run hours and hours and hours each and every day. You know, some household machines can only be used a half hour and then they must be turned off and rest, uh, you know, before they can uh, continue to be used. I'm glad to say that the Omega TWN30S, which is the world's first twin gear juicer that's certified for commercial use at the lowest price, is now available. And it's built to a rigorous commercial standards uh, for use in a restaurant, juice bar, or other uh, food service facility. And, you know, let's be real here. At, at this price point, under $400 for a certified commercial juicer, this is not the main one you're gonna wanna use if you're selling, you know, 500 juices a day, right? Get a, get a, a regular juice press or find another solution. This is for like a low volume uh, cafe that's gonna serve a few juices a day. Maybe if you're making, you know, kombucha and you need to juice your ginger up and have a certified machine to juice your ginger, this is the machine you're gonna to wanna to get. Maybe you have a juice bar and you sell wheatgrass shots, right? This is the machine, the lowest cost commercial approved machine that you could use to make some wheatgrass shots here and there, right? And this is not like a heavy duty volume juicer. You're just gonna be like, if you got a line of, line of people out the door for wheatgrass, I've yet to see that. But this is not the one you're gonna to wanna to use if you have like a, a long line and people coming in all day. This is like, you know, good for a dozen, two dozen people a day making wheatgrass. Uh, this machine can run up to an hour uh, straight without any breaks. Of course, after about an hour, you should turn it off, let it rest, let it cool down before you start using it again. So I do wanna say that this model has been out. Omega has introduced this earlier in the year. It's been out for household use, but only now, uh, you know, am I making a video about commercial use once I saw, you know, that it was a pretty stable product and I've had very little issues with it personally. So for uh, household use, right, it has a full 15 year warranty, but if you're using it for commercial purposes, right, then you have a one year warranty, which is still longer than most commercial juicers, which sometimes um, could be only six months in that case. So uh, this is the machine, how it comes boxed up. And uh, you know, it's a slow RPM juicer. And this is very important. You know, if you're shopping for a commercial juicer, most commercial juicers you're gonna find are high speed centrifugal ejection machines. Brand new, they may run about $1,000 or more. This one is half the price and it runs a lot slower, but because it's slower, it, two things are gonna happen. Number one, it's gonna take you more time to make juice. So today you're gonna, we're gonna be juicing some apples and uh, celery and even spinach. And it's gonna take a significant amount of time to make a 16 ounce juice. So if you're selling 16 ounce juices and you need to make a lot of them, this may not be the one for you, right? Um, it's a bit slower, but you know, for something like wheatgrass shot where you're only doing like an ounce at a time, it's not gonna be a problem whatsoever. Of course, you know, if your volume is uh, low, this is also a really good machine to use. And what is said is that if you're using a slow speed or cold press style machine such as this one, you're gonna, uh, you know, keep higher levels of phytonutrients and phytochemicals and uh, vitamins and minerals in the juice compared to a high speed machine that runs at a high speed that injects a lot of oxygen into the juice, which lowers the juice quality. 
and the, also the stability of the juice, it may not last as long when you're doing it in a high speed fashion. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, remove this box out of the way and let's show you guys the Omega TWN30S today. I'm going to show you guys actually all the different parts there are. It's super simple, super easy to clean and I guess let's just get right into it. So this is the machine right here, uh, nice and handy, just uh, pick it up. And uh, first thing I want to let you guys know is uh, let's talk about the certifications on this. You know, many juice bars may not be purchasing proper certified equipment. I think this is very imperative and important, you know, from a public safety perspective. You know, if a machine is not certified uh, to the ETL sanitation standards, you know, it may not comply with uh, different electrical requirements and safety requirements so that there's no like nooks and crannies where foods might get you know stuck and things might not get cleaned and create a bacterial hazard. So on the bottom of this machine, there's uh, two little marks on here. This is the ETL uh, standard mark and then the ETL sanitation mark. They're two different marks. And uh, one is basically conforming to like uh, electrical requirements and one's for the sanitation. And I would not be making this video if I did not have this paperwork right here that we're showing you guys. And this is the uh, ETL sanitation mark uh, showing that it's authorized and uh, fully certified. And uh, let's see, when was this? Uh, this is an uh, issue back in uh, 2012. Uh, you know, this unit has been in development for many years now. And finally, it's uh, here. So yeah, that's super important. So basically how this machine works, it has uh, two gears in there. And this runs at a low and slow 160 revolutions per minute. We could go ahead and... Uh, turn it on the back. It's fairly quiet, so unlike some of those uh, high-speed juice machines that you may have in a commercial establishment that sounds like an airplane taking off in your kitchen, you know, you could hold a fairly normal conversation while this is running because it is running so slow. Uh, the magic that makes this machine work are two twin gears. Let's go ahead and uh, pull this uh, apart for you guys. This is very simple to uh, disassemble and reassemble. You have a collar here. You have the outlet here the end cap and then you have a special uh, knob here in the end that has a special uh, spring there and the spring basically keeps tension on the produce to keep it inside the machine and only ejects it, allows it to get ejected once the pulp is fully dry. Then we have a juicing screen. So this is the uh, small hole juicing screen. This machine also does come with a a uh, larger hole juicing screen or a coarse screen. That's if you want more pulp in your juice and if your customers want more pulp in the juice. And then it actually also comes with what's called a blank plate that you could use it for grinding things like nuts or use it to process frozen fruits into uh, frozen fruit sorbets. So that's the uh, screen here. And then of course you have the uh, two little, little miniature gears. Most important thing on the miniature gears here, there's uh, some red dots on the back of the gears and you want to line these up every time before assembling. You want to make a little uh, triangle shape out of the, the dots, the two dots on uh, one gear and the one dot in the other just uh, gets lined up before you put it in. And basically how this works is you put the produce in between these gears and literally the produce is crushed, ground up, and then uh, it's uh, squeezed. So this is like a simulating a hydraulic press down machine in a one-step unit where there's no grinding and mess, the messiness of the press to press out. And then finally you have just this uh, last piece right here that's uh, very simple, easy to uh, take apart and clean. So to put this machine together, you're going to take the uh, drum here, put this on the unit. You're going to take the screen with the hole in it and that's going to be uh, facing up. Slide that in there and then you're going to go ahead and uh, line up the gears properly and uh, slide that right in there too. Then you're gonna put the uh, end cap here on and it says up, so we put it on up, then we put the collar on there and it just locks into place and then we're all ready to juice. So, uh, you know, I'll be upfront with you guys. I've used this juicer in the past, uh, you know, testing it against other twin gear juicers and other juicers. And actually, it's a quite a decent machine. It gets a fairly high yield. Of course, you know, as with every juicer, there are pros and cons. You know, some of the pros for this unit is it's a commercial certified unit. That's amazing, at the lowest price. There's no other juicer that could touch this. You know, in the under $400 range, there's no other commercial juicer just even in that range. You know, the next 
least expensive commercial juicers maybe double the price of this. So you know you could get two of these or one of the next highest price one that's not even out or available yet because there's a big gap in the market for commercial slow juicers. Hopefully that should be changing soon and we'll be offering many new slow juicers in the future, but those are gonna be priced at least double, maybe triple what this guy is. So if you're really looking for that budget-minded consumer, um, you know, uh, commercial juicer, uh, this is the model you're gonna to wanna to get. So uh, what we're gonna to juice today, first off, is ginger. I, you know, I've, I've been approached by many different uh, companies that need ginger juice to use in recipes for flavoring kombucha or flavoring different juices and all they want to juice is ginger and so this is a commercial juicer that will allow you to do that of course the other main use of this will be wheatgrass and maybe we'll be juicing some wheatgrass here at the end to show you guys how it does and then finally we're going to also make a vegetable juice to show you guys how it works with making a vegetable juice how long it takes and the quality of juice it makes as well I guess without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into juicing here. We're going to go ahead and uh, make sure this end cap is tightened all the way up to keep the most back pressure in. And we're going to put a juice catch cup underneath here and our pulp catch uh, cup here. And then uh, this machine does come with two pushers, a plastic pusher and a wooden pusher. I always encourage you guys to use a wooden pusher uh, with the TWN. I find it a little bit better. And so we're just going to go ahead and take some ginger here and we're just going to juice it. So let's just go ahead and turn this machine on. And we're just gonna go ahead and take off like little knobs of ginger. It needs to fit in the feed chute. So the feed chute is a uh, one and a half inches in diameter circle. And that's gonna definitely slow you down when feeding things. It's gonna pop off a piece of ginger, drop it in there and just push it down with the pusher. And that means this is like putting like butter on a hot skillet, it literally melts. So I mean, once again, this is some really, really fresh ginger. It's not old and dried out. That's very important when you're buying ginger to juice. You wanna get some fresh ginger, not that old stuff. Literally, you put it in there, and I mean, the ginger just literally melts right between the auger, getting sucked in and uh, getting compressed up. And look at this, we're getting tons of ginger juice out. And I wanna juice a good amount of ginger for you guys today to show you guys like how really this works. Um, in a high volume if you have to do a lot of, you know, uh, commercial uh, pressing of the ginger. Now I do encourage you guys to put like one piece of ginger in or a piece of anything in at a time. Don't like load up the feet, you then push down, push, put one piece in and then uh, push it in there and it's gonna work pretty much without issue. This would also be a very good juicer for juicing things like uh, turmeric and other kind of herbs. So even if you wanna juice say medicinal cannabis, or even if it's non-medicinal cannabis, or other herbs, you know, oregano, thyme, parsley. This is gonna do an amazing job at doing that because the twin gears really get in there and grind up whatever you're putting and it extracts out all the delicious, rich, uh, medicinal uh, and healing juices. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and juice this up. We're gonna speed this camera up so uh, it doesn't, doesn't waste a lot of time so you guys can just see me juicing this. And we're gonna come back at you with a nice tall glass of uh, the ginger juice. All right, so as you guys can see, I've demolished all that ginger in the TWN30S. It's working without any issues. Uh, we got a lot of ginger juice made and some super dry pulp. We'll show you guys in a second. I mean, I've had no issues juicing the ginger. You know, ginger can tear up some machines. I've juiced ginger in centrifugal ejection machines and it really tears up those machines. You know, that's not the best way to juice ginger. You know, using a twin gear juicer like this is definitely, in my opinion, the way to do it, especially after seeing this. Now, you know, once again, this is for like low volume uh, users, right? If you gotta juice like, you know, cases and cases and cases of ginger, this may not be the machine for you. But if you're just a small mom and pop shop or, you know, need to make ginger for your kombucha flavoring and you're gonna run the machine for no more than one hour, this is the machine you're gonna wanna get. And here's the thing, because this machine is so inexpensive, 
you could buy more than one machine and still be cheaper than other commercial juicers and then you're gonna just rotate like okay I'm gonna use the first machine for a half hour then I'm gonna stop and use the second machine use that for a half hour then go back to the first machine so this way you alternate them so you can keep juicing the ginger without putting excessive strain or uh, you know uh, work on the motor and I want to show you guys this check this out I mean this is the pulp that came out of the juicer here and I don't know if you guys can see that look at that this looks like ginger sawdust look at that I don't know if you guys can see that that's totally amazing now here I'm gonna pick this up and I'm pretty strong I'm gonna squeeze that I can't even squeeze any juice out of it nothing comes out and this is that we're actually really nice and fragrant I mean this has done a superior job on ginger and look at this I mean it's really crushed up all those hard fiber strands of the ginger into like literally nothing so with the pocket recessed teeth the TWN had no issues uh, doing this task whatsoever so now I want to show you guys all the ginger juice it created ginger juice is some potent stuff like if I was to sit here and uh, drink all this I'd definitely probably be in a heap of trouble but look at that look at that nice clean consistency ready to go into your kombucha drink or other fermented beverages I mean look at that all that ginger must be like almost like 10 12 ounces of juice right there that's really potent stuff yeah no problem in the TWN 30s the next thing I want to juice for you guys actually is just more of a standard vegetable juice you know as you guys saw the ginger is no problem and if ginger is no problem you could also juice things like carrots and beets and and even what we're going to juice next is celery and uh, some leafy greens and some apples this is more of a good you know uh, combination juice or vegetable juice and this is if you want to have like a juice bar but you know you're going to see that it does take some time to just make a cup of juice with the TWN once again it's a slow juicer and you know that's one of the one of the cons of this machine is that it is slow of course you could buy an expensive commercial ejection juicer for twice the price and be done faster but you're going to lose nutrition um, you know that being said Omega will be coming out with a uh, more faster production unit uh, for juicing uh, slow juices in a more fast and efficient way maybe uh, next year so stay tuned for that um, yeah let's get juicing okay so what we're going to do first uh, when we're juicing different items we're going to go ahead and mix a, a couple of the different items and alternate heating them very important so if you're making a spinach apple celery juice you're not want to just put all the spinach through the juicer and then all the apples and then all the celery you want to put a handful of each one um, and, and keep rotating them so we're just going to go ahead and cut this uh, celery off through the top and the bottoms here and uh, we're just going to have to go ahead and cut up these apples so that they fit into the uh, smaller feature of the machine not an issue I'm going to cut the apples into like a tic-tac-toe pattern that'll allow it to uh, easily fit and the other thing I want to let you guys know is that I am juicing the apple seeds right I don't personally believe it's a problem to juice apple seeds uh, through one of these machines this machine is so powerful it's actually going to grind up the apple seeds and put some of the nutrients from the apple seeds in the juice I guess uh, without further ado let's just go ahead and get into juicing we're going to go ahead and grab some of that spinach and just shove it down in the chute there I like to preload uh, the chute with the spinach in this case unlike the ginger where you do not want to do this because the spinach is so soft it'll really easily get pushed into the machine so we got that in there then we're just going to go ahead and shove it in and literally the machine just literally grinds up all the spinach and as you guys can see instantly we're getting the spinach juice coming out next we're going to go ahead and put a piece of apple put that in there once again you know pushing apples and softer produce items through the TWN not a problem whatsoever uh, next we got the celery you know celery is gonna be you know fairly easy I could use one finger and uh, push this down with one finger so it doesn't take a lot of arm strength I mean that being said if you are old elderly you know maybe have some arthritis or whatnot you know uh, this may not be the machine for you now the thing to remember with the TWN you may all always see some uh, kind of backup juice that's not actually being ejected out the juicer uh, this is especially uh, gonna happen if you um, have juiced ginger before and we got all the hard ginger fibers in in the machine and it's not allowing the pulp to come out so if that happens don't fret 
at some point it'll actually just uh, work through that uh, blockage and as you guys can see the level of the juice is going down another thing i was about to do was uh, i could loosen this little knob here to let some of the pressure out to allow it to juice but yeah it looks like it's uh, worked out itself now this machine is excellent for juicing hard vegetables like the ginger like the turmeric like the carrots like the beets it's also going to be very good for juicing the leafy greens right really does a great job we'll really get a dry um, pull coming out now if you're juicing fruits with these different ingredients it's not going to be a problem but if you're trying to juice like straight apples right this is maybe not the best machine for you twin gears really need some hard fibrous material that's in vegetables and not necessarily in fruit so if you want to juice like oranges not the machine for you guys to do if you're juicing straight oranges now if you're juicing oranges with some vegetables you know it's not going to be an issue in the TWN. As you guys can see, I'm pushing all this uh, produce through here. I'm getting the pulp coming out. The pulp's also very dry, and that's what I really like. This juicer will save you money in produce cost. Produce cost is one of the things that's gonna cost you a lot of money in the long run, and the more efficient a juicer you get from the get-go, the more money you're gonna save because more of the, the produce you're buying is going in the glass instead of uh, into the compost pile or unfortunately in the garbage. I do encourage you guys to uh, you know, compost all your produce scraps so I can continue to go on and feed other people or other creatures on the planet. All right, so as you guys can see, this is working very simply and very easily, no problem whatsoever once we got our produce pre-prepared. And once again, this is a workhorse machine, right? This will run for an hour long at a time. Let's see, I'm up to maybe uh, 400 milliliters of juice here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, keep going. Uh, keep this in real time for you guys, so you guys can see actually how long it takes me to make a, a nice cup of juice in the TWN. Once again, I'm rotating the different ingredients. Very important. One of the things and one of the reasons why I like the TWN is because this will differentiate you if you're serving juices in your juice bar, you know, if you serve juices made with the TWN 30S, you can call yourself a cold pressed juice. This is different than those high speed machines because this is not oxidizing the juice as much and uh, gonna put more nutrition in the glass, plus it may also save, uh, you know, uh, better for longer. So in general, I'll give you guys some tips and tricks here. In general, one pound of produce, um, no matter what type, whether that's carrots or leafy greens, will produce one cup of juice or eight ounces of juice. So especially when juicing, you know, some of the things like the leafy greens, some of the most expensive produce items you can't have, so you probably wouldn't want to put a whole lot of there. Carrots, one of the least expensive, so you're gonna to want to have, you know, a, a recipe with a lot of carrots in there, because that's gonna save you some money. Celery also, you know, a very good uh, produce item to juice, nice and watery. Another one I really like a lot is the cucumbers. Now, cucumbers add a lot of water and, uh, you know, put a nice mild flavor. And recipe development, I mean, this machine will be great for recipe development as well if you're doing recipe development for a juice bar because you're going to get a cold press juice and you're going to be able to put together your ratios and just do small amounts. You know, some of those big gigantic juice presses you know they cost thousands of dollars really and you know you wouldn't want to do that just to do uh, some uh, testing uh, to come up with your recipes whereas this would be the perfect commercial approved machine that could be even used in production all right so as you guys can see this is working really well I think we're gonna go ahead and feed in one more stock of celery here and I'll show you guys the pulp that came out and then we'll just show you the, uh, the juice that's been created here. All right, once you're done putting the last produce item in the machine, you want to let the machine run a little bit because it's still dripping the juice out. You don't want to just turn it off instantly because then you're losing some yield inside the machine. I mean, I think we're good. We're going to go ahead and turn this baby off. And uh, next, I want to show you guys the pulp here, right? Once again, on the bottom of this container, we have the, uh, <laughs> this is just impressive, man, the ginger sawdust here. Uh, Next, on top, if I'm not mixing it up too bad, here's the uh, pulp from the, the spinach and the celery and some of the apples. It's really dry. I mean, some pulps you could pick up, like especially if it's out of a centrifugal ejection machine, it'll just be dripping with the uh, liquid here. We're gonna go ahead and pick some of this stuff up. Let's see if I can squeeze out some juice. Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five drops. This is a really efficient juicer compared to some of those more expensive high-speed commercial centrifugal ejection machines. 
Next, I want to go ahead and uh, pour out this juice for you guys. Look at this. Uh, about 600 milliliters of juice. Really nice, smooth consistency. Now, this machine does also include a uh, sieve if you want to sieve out the juice. But yeah, right there, easily a nice cup of juice that really took a no time whatsoever. Let me go ahead and try this. We, we got the leftover ginger remnants, so it's going to be pretty strong juice for me today. Mmm. Woo! Got to put some hair on your chest, man, because I had all the leftover ginger in the bottom of the collection cup and in the machine. Definitely nice and strong. But ginger, one of the healthiest things you could be drinking. Yeah, so I mean, pretty much that's the uh, demonstration of the ginger and the vegetable juice. What I want to do now is maybe uh, get this set up and we're going to go ahead and show you guys how you guys could juice some wheatgrass in the TWN30S. So now I'm back and for the final demonstration, I'll be juicing some wheatgrass today that I already have pre-cut. Now I do want to let you guys know one of the questions you guys may have is, hey John, should I be cleaning the juicer after every juice I make? Well. Here it is, it depends, right? If you're just juicing straight ginger, 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 and not rotating like, you know, going with apples and oranges and celery and cucumbers and different things, continue to juice ginger all day until you're done juicing for the day, then stop and clean the machine. Um, that's probably the best way to do it. The other thing I will say is if you are juicing ginger for a while and then you're gonna let the machine sit for several hours at a time, you know, I would then also encourage you guys to take the machine apart and clean it um, and don't just let it sit there because some of the pulp and things will dry inside the machine and then it will not have uh, the best um, extraction after that point. The other thing I want you guys to know about because the housing on this is clear, you will see the juicing screen get clogged with some produce. And even though the juicing screen appears to be clogged, it'll still be working, right? Uh, that being said, that's why you may want to uh, get an additional screen, especially in a commercial uh, uses. And depending on if the screen gets too clogged or not, you will want to clean the screen. You know, in the juicing of the ginger I made, I made uh, 12 ounces of ginger, 12 ounces of vegetable juice. The screen was getting about ready uh, to be cleaned out. So and then I just uh, cleaned it all out. And you know, that's what's going to take the most time cleaning the machine. The machine cleans really easily. They do give you a special cleaning brush. You, you will want to use the uh, little uh, screwdriver end to scrape down the screen to get all the pulp uh, dislodge and then use the uh, the hard bristles to uh, scrub it down. It really takes no time whatsoever uh, to do that. Now the other thing I want to let you guys know is uh, when juicing something like the wheatgrass, right? Um, the machine, the, the the screen on the machine is not going to clog up because wheatgrass doesn't have like particle bits that break off, kind of like that ginger that turned into sawdust does. Um, you know, other kinds of leafy greens may not clog the screen up as well, and it depends on the specific produce item you're juicing. For example, oranges. If you're just juicing oranges, for example, that is not gonna tend to clog the screen up as bad as, say, uh, apples will. So you're just gonna have to experiment and play with it, right? And so I guess uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the juicing the wheatgrass. And uh, wheatgrass is a very healing food. You know, it's uh, very simple to grow your own wheatgrass in trays. I don't know if you wanna do that if you're into the business of uh, you know, producing food, but you could get wheatgrass flats delivered to you. And also, besides just juicing wheatgrass, which is one of the most difficult things to juice. I mean, literally, this is just a blade of grass, much like your lawn. You could actually go out and juice your lawn. That's actually, all grasses are edible. But we have this thing like, oh, it's gotta be wheatgrass. You could juice barley grass, you know, kamut grass. Uh, different kinds of grasses are all edible, as well as the sprouts. This machine would be excellent for juicing things like uh, um, sunflower sprouts, for example, or other microgreens when juiced with, say, some celery or apples. I mean, I think that's the future right there, the microgreens juicing. They're so rich in nutrients. And that's why wheatgrass is so popular. Wheatgrass, all the different grass family of plants could absorb up to 90 different trace minerals uh, from the soil. Also, there's many different phytochemicals and phytonutrients that are unique to grass that are not in other foods. Especially if a cafe or juice bar, you know, uh, serving the wheatgrass, there's a lot of profit, you know, 100% markup in the wheatgrass shots because just, you know, one ounce of a juice could sell for two bucks or more depending on your local environment. And you could, you know, one whole flat of wheatgrass, you know, wholesale might cost uh, eight to ten dollars depending where you are, and you could easily double your money. 
So, you know, in that case, you could easily pay for your juicer in no time whatsoever. And I'm glad that now Omega has the lowest price, a commercial certified and approved juicer for not just wheatgrass, but for everything else. I want to talk really quick about medicinal or medicinal cannabis, you know, that may be legal and is actually legal for recreational use in some uh, different areas of the country at this time. This would also be an excellent juicer, uh, you know, that is commercial certified for juicing cannabis. And I hope to have an episode on that uh, fairly soon. I'm a big proponent and believe cannabis is an amazing medicine and even in some cases more powerful than just the wheatgrass. And I, I look forward to the day where there's a cannabis uh, juice bar where you can just actually just juice and get cannabis shots. <laughs> So next, let's go ahead and get into juicing the wheatgrass. Now when juicing the grass, it's really simple and easy. You're just gonna go ahead and grab some blades of grass and put it down in the machine. And look, you don't even need to use the pusher at this point because literally you put the grass in there and literally the machine sets it in. This is one of the things I like really about the uh, twin gear machines. Look at this, we'll grab a nice clump and put it in there. It sucks it all in. Now here's the thing, you know, there's not a whole lot of juice in just blades of grass. It's going to take a nice uh, quantity of grass. Now, it's always best if you uh, fresh cut the grass instead of getting it pre-cut. And then even to increase your yields, here's a tip, right? To increase your yields when juicing the wheatgrass, you want to dunk it in cold water and just uh, pull it out, right? That'll help increase some of the yield because some of the water is going to be hanging on to the wheatgrass, plus that water will help to pull out some of the nutrients in the uh, wheatgrass itself. So let's see, let's go ahead and continue to feed this grass in. And as you guys can see, you know, we're getting some drops already of grass, wheatgrass juice. And once again, I mean, it literally smells like you're cutting a lawn right now when it's juicing. <laughs> I mean, that's what it really smells like. The good thing about wheatgrass, you guys can see this is super simple and super easy. So, I mean, this is the number one machine I would recommend if you want to juice commercial wheatgrass. Literally, you just cut it off, you stick it in there, it sucks it in. Super simple, the screen doesn't get clogged, the juice comes out, and you're only serving like little one ounce shots at a time and going to make some good money at it. We didn't even juice enough wheatgrass yet to like have the, the wheatgrass pulp be ejected out of the front because we just really didn't have a lot today to juice. But uh, we could show you guys uh, some of the wheatgrass juice that came out. And uh, here it is, look at that, nice green juice, not a whole lot today. But yeah, this does very potent and I do encourage you if you're new into drinking wheatgrass, don't just like try to be a man and down like, you know, 12 ounces at once. Start out with a half ounce and, you know, in some cases it might be good for your customers to uh, offer them, you know, a chaser of water or even maybe a chaser of uh, some kind of nice uh, fruit juice so that it tastes good or even diluting the wheatgrass down with some kind of orange juice which is one of my favorite things to dilute the wheatgrass down with uh, so it doesn't taste quite as strong because this stuff can be quite potent all right so yeah i mean pretty much as you guys saw the omega twn30s was su quite successful and i was actually quite impressed on how well it juiced ginger one of the best slow juicers i've tested to date to juice ginger uh, definitely better than a vertical uh, auger juicer that tends to get backed up when juicing ginger. This really made a ginger sawdust. I was quite impressed. Uh, it could have kept running longer if I needed to juice more ginger than that, but that was actually quite a quantity of ginger for those of you guys that uh, juice ginger and you guys know how strong and potent this stuff is. It did an amazing job on the vegetables. Once again, you know, this machine, because it's a twin gear uh, technology, crushing and squeezing, has that outlet adjusting knob here with the spring tension that keeps the pulp inside to make sure it's dry before it comes out. Got an amazing yield on the vegetables. We'll do great with hard vegetables as well as just the standard vegetables, you know, things like broccoli and cauliflower and uh, the celery. Also, we'll do a great job on the leafy greens, right? And then the fruits, it'll do the fruits along with the vegetables without issues and some fruits it'll do just by themselves, you know. Something like apples may make more of an applesauce, especially if you get soft and mealy apples. So when juicing any fruits in a slow juicer, I do encourage you guys to select hard, firm fruits uh, for the best results. And as you guys see, can see, it also juiced the wheatgrass, no problem. So I think, you know, the TWN, once again, it's your low cost leader um, for a commercial cold pressed juicer. So you guys could get juicing in your juice bar or making, 
you know, juices to add to your uh, different recipes, whether you're making kombucha or other uh, fermented beverages. I mean, this is the pick. This is what I'm going to recommend for you guys because here's the thing. There are no other alternatives. And is, is this the perfect machine? No. You know, there are some things that could be improved about it, but here it is. This is the lowest cost option so you guys could start selling juices and offering them in your commercial establishment because literally this machine is going to pay for itself in no time once you start producing juices in it. And yeah, that's all I pretty much have to say about that. If you guys are interested in purchasing the TWN30S, uh, please be sure to check the links down below to the discountjuicers.com website. Also be sure to use the coupon code YouTube. Uh, that's Y-O-U-T-U-B-E -E with no spaces for an additional $15 discount on this machine. That'll make it the lowest price anywhere for a commercial certified juicer. I really look forward to uh, playing more with my TWN30S. And if you have any questions regarding the TWN30S, please be sure to check the links down below to send me a message personally. I'll be sure to uh, answer you and uh, help you out to the best of my ability. And I'll also be uh, sure to uh, you know, do more juicing videos with the TWN. So if you have any requests on what you want to see juiced in the TWN, um, I'll be glad to make those videos so you guys can see how it would perform in your specific uh, environment and your specific needs. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up to let me know. Uh, that'll encourage me to make more videos of the TWN. This is like uh, my new favorite uh, commercial juice bar juicer now for the lowest price. I mean, it's amazing that Omega got the commercial certification for this and I'm glad that they're offering it. So now juicing can get out to more people and more commercial establishments could start offering these fresh juices that can definitely change your life. And that's why I sell juicers today because my life was changed by juicing. I almost lost my life when I was younger and that's why I'm so committed to educating the world, educating you guys about the power of fruits and vegetables and the power of the juicers and how they can increase your profits but also more importantly uh, turn the health of you, uh, your customers and the nation around. So uh, also be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. I have over 450 vi videos at this time educating you guys on all different uh, juicers, most of which are all household machines. Um, also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any, any of my new and upcoming episodes uh, coming out about every uh, five to seven days. I'll be having some new commercial juicers coming out here within the new year and I'll be testing those and demonstrating them and even comparing them against uh, this machine so you will know the best commercial juicer uh, to get for you and your establishment. And uh, once again, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would encourage you guys to support me and my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. This allows me to continue to make these YouTube videos where I educate you guys on juicing as well as all the other topics that I teach on YouTube these days. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with discountjuicers.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, please visit discountjuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors. All right, this is John Kohler with discountjuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And I know a lot of you guys watching this video right now might be in the market for a juicer. You're shopping for a juicer and you want to get the best one. And thank God you found my videos because I am the juicing expert that's going to share with you guys and show, show you guys actually in the videos 